Hello, everybody today. Welcome. What's up? It's your Monday. Yes, it is Monday. In the homes of Dr. Don and Dr. Justin. That's it, guys. We're here to bring you guys some more info. We got a cool show today. We're going to talk about cholesterol as it is cholesterol month. And man, people just don't understand cholesterol. And you're so miseducated. Um, and we just need to fix that. Okay. So that's going to be our goal. I can hear us. Good. I'm not trying to hear us. I can hear us enough. Um, but we also want to give something away. So we talked about uh, we we're going to offer and raffle something off. In here is all the names. And we're going to raffle off California Poppy today. So if nice. you participated and you, uh, and, and you tag people that you love and you care about, bam. You got you got invited and you're in this and we're gonna draw that here shortly. Okay. Uh, well, right now, let's talk about cholesterol. Let's get into it. What the heck is cholesterol? Man, cholesterol is absolutely essential uh, for function. You gotta have got gotta have cholesterol, and that's uh, you know that's why so many people. One of the main reasons why so many people are sick today is because they're miseducated about cholesterol. Um, you know, they're, they're trying to avoid foods, uh, that are very good for you that are told that it, you know, can increase saturated fat, which will increase cholesterol, which will increase risk of heart disease. And that, that's the big thing that we want to talk about today, guys, because the whole thing that we're told is saturated fat equals high cholesterol, high cholesterol equals heart disease. Uh, and, and, and the reality is there's just, there's just no truth to that. There's a lot more, uh, to what causes heart disease, what causes plaquing inside your arteries. High cholesterol does not equal heart disease. Matter of fact, there's been a lot of studies done. Actually, not a lot of studies because the results of these studies actually uh, go completely against what the American Heart Association wants us to believe. And so uh, the last study was done, I believe, in 2003. But there's a condition called familial hypercholesterolemia. And these are uh, families that uh, have cholesterols well into the 300s and across the board. Uh, these studies were done over 10 year periods of time. They were done in the age range of people that are at higher risk uh, of heart disease. Uh, so you know, the, the 60 to 70 range, but across the board, the results of these studies showed better longevity, better mortality rate, less heart disease. And so that, that, that bears the question of, well, what truly does cause heart disease? And, and that's what we want to get to this week. Uh, but today we want to start off to talk about really why cholesterol is so important uh, and why those stat medications are so detrimental to your overall health. Yeah, well, let's let's hit this real quick because I know people are thinking about it. And guys, as you jump on, make sure you ask questions, uh, comment, ask questions, and obviously start sharing this thing around because there's so many people that need to know the truth about cholesterol. And, and I think one of the big questions that people will get and that comes up is, yeah, well, my doctor said, Oh God, I love when we, I love when you lead the conversation with. Well, my doctor said, "Hey, okay, well, what am I going to have to tell you that he's an idiot about?" Um, said that it's it's uh, it's you you said familial uh, that it's um, genetic. Genetic, yeah. That because my family had it, I'm going to have it. Or I love this. I don't have high cholesterol. I don't have anything wrong with me. But because my family has it, my doctor put me on this. That is just absolutely crazy. And I hear that all the time. And let me just hit this on genetics that the, the, the show and the research more and more shows every day that it's not genetic, rather it's epigenetic. And epigenetic simply means that it's lifestyle related. So cholesterol is a lifestyle type thing. Now we're gonna talk about why, why things go up, why your cholesterol's up, and just like educate you a little bit more about that today and then through the week. But it's like diabetes, like it's a lifestyle. It's not just because your family had it, you're going to have it. That's, it, you know, maybe, maybe there is some genetic parts where like you have some genes that are, make you more likely to activate those genes. But epigenetic simply means it's your lifestyle and that you have activated those genes through your lifestyle or through the same lifestyle that your mom and your dad and their moms and their dads told you guys to live. And when you live and do the same things, you get the same thing. So if you want something different, it's very simple. You have to change. Yep. You just have to do something different, but you have to figure out what's causing it and why it's high. So, so the cholesterol gets high or borderline high, and they scare the holy crap out of you and tell you that you're going to have a heart attack if you don't take these drugs. That should be malpractice in itself. Yep. 
Yep, absolutely, absolutely. And and you know the analogy we like to use with genetics is that your genetics loads the gun, but your lifestyle pulls the trigger. And and th guys, this is not opinion. I mean, research is very clear showing today that that genes, your DNA responds to the environment. And so they're changed based off of environment, based off of stressors, based off of what you're putting in your body, based off of, uh, you know, the, the inflammatory levels in your body. So all these things are, are being, genes are turned on and turned off based off of environment. So, uh, you know, and we hear time and time again, you see family members that have similar genes, same genes, right? Biological uh, siblings, one's really healthy, one's really not. And again, it really comes down to, to lifestyle, right? So um, yeah, guys, jump on. I want to say hi to a couple people, Miss Heather, Stacy, Sharissa, Tanya, Dr. Justin, Dr. Shannon's on. Awesome, guys. Very good. Like I said, uh, share this round. Yep. When well, Heather says that, you know, her goal is to prove genetics are wrong. And so, Heather, that obviously, I'm guessing that you have, uh, you know, family with, you know, history of genetics, and they're telling you that since your cholesterol is raising, that like you have to be on it forever. It's so false. And again, today we're going to give a lot of that. And when they talk about genes, I say like, well, it might be your genes. It's just the ones you're wearing. Those are probably a, a part of it. And so we got to fix that and, and everything will come down. With that and doctor, I, I want to share this real quick because diabetes is one of the biggest diseases um, that that is told, that you're told is genetics, yeah. right? And, and uh, I just got off the phone about an hour ago with one of our patients, just a follow-up call with him. Um, he was told it was genetic. He was diabetic for 30 years before he found our office. Um, uh, and Amanda, will you grab my charger, please? My, my computer's about to die. Um, sorry, but, um, but genetics is what he was told 30 years. He was taking 200 units of insulin every single day. And he's been doing this for the last 10 years. Well, January 1st, he started his journey with us. Um, uh, and he has been plugging along today. He has, he is no longer taking insulin. He's also gotten off a medication called Genuvia. And he's reduced his metformin down to 500 milligrams a day. So this guy came in, he was taking 200 units of insulin. He was doing Genuvia and doing a thousand milligrams of metformin twice a day with sugars consistently in the 200s, the low 200s. Now, no insulin, no Genuvia, half the metformin. Every morning he, he wakes up to about 115 to 120 blood sugar. So that's genetics for you right there, baby. That means that because of his lifestyle changes, because of the herbal support, because of us removing his triggers and giving his body what it needs, he is now controlling his blood sugars pretty darn well uh, with very, very little support as far as medication. So um, I don't care what your excuses are, guys. Your doctor's telling you it's genetics because it takes your power away, right? What can you do if it's genetics? Not nothing. I'm screwed. All I can do is take drugs, right? That's what they want you to believe, guys. We tell you that you can influence your genetics because we want to empower you and not take your power away. That's right. So, a little bit of a rabbit trail there. Squirrel. Yep, that's it. But uh, we're pretty good at that. So, uh, <laughs> so, so yeah. And Kayla, you, I, I love, I love to say that I want to be the change in my family's health for hopefully years to come. And by you even on here and you having that mindset and those thoughts, you will become. So don't just think and hope that you're going to just become it. And you are going to be a leader and you're going to teach your kids and they're going to watch you. And we're going to break generations of these curses, generations of these diseases. And it starts right now with you. So that is flipping amazing, Kayla. So, um, so, so what, all right, squirrels are gone back to it. The next question would be Dr. Miller is what? Okay. So I, why do I have high cholesterol? Why does it get high? Because I, I think that's a safe question and even a better question to ask your doctor. Why is it high? Because when you go to your doctor and you get a CBC and it's a little elevated, be on drugs. And you don't ask the question why. Why is it high in the first place? Or what is that even telling you when it's high? Yep. You have to ask why. You have to ask why. Um, and what is high? What is high? Is over 200 high? Is, is 201 high, but 200 is okay? Right. So everybody and every individual has their own normal. Let's just start with that. So these lab markers that tell you you need to be within a range. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. OK, Dr. Justin's physiology is different than my physiology. Dr. Justin's cholesterol levels normal is my is different than my normal. All right. So um, to start with that, the second thing is, is in order to know why it's high or to answer the question, why is my cholesterol high? you have to know what cholesterol does for you. And so that's what we want to talk about, right? Let's dive in. Let's talk about the things that cholesterol does for you because when these things need healing, your body's going to increase cholesterol 
so that these things can be healed. These things can be fixed. Okay. So number one, first and foremost, hormones, hmm. hormones, hormones, guys, every hormone in your body from your steroid hormones uh, to your stress hormones to, you know, in all your hormones. And when I'm saying hormones, guys, we're talking, we're talking your, your cortisol, your stress hormones, your estrogens, your testosterone, right? Your progesterone, pregnenolone, all of your hormones starts with a precursor of cholesterol. So tell me this, if you are stressed out of your mind because you have kids in your house now that you're, you're teaching, you're trying to work from home, um, you're, you're, you're nervous about uh, uh, having a health issue from this virus, you're dealing with all this stress, your cortisol levels are going up. What do you think your LDLs are going to do? What do you think your cholesterol is going to do? Inevitably, it, it should go up. If you're healthy, a healthy response would be your body to increase cholesterol, right? And so, so let's think about this, guys. You, all this stress you're dealing with, right? You get some, some blood pressure spikes. Number one reason why you go to the doc, you go to the doc, they run your cholesterol levels because you're under tremendous stress, you have high cholesterol. So now what's your lifetime recommendation? And that's the crazy thing is, once you start cholesterol, is that something that they want you to get off of? Nope, nope. So because your body was having a natural response to stress by increasing cholesterol, you had a negative symptom from it. You went to your doctor, they checked your cholesterol. It is so-called high. Now you're on a cholesterol medication forever. And guys, you're like, oh, that, well, that can't happen to me. No, it happens every day. It happens every day, many, many times, right? So um, stress is going to affect cholesterol. Um, your testosterone's going down, right? All you guys that are eating too much damn sugar all the time, your testosterone levels are in the floor. And so what's your body's response to that? It wants to increase cholesterol to make more testosterone, right? Flip side of that, you wonder why you're starting to develop erectile dysfunction when you've been on a statin medication for 10 years and you're only 40 years old. Well, guys, it's because low cholesterol equals low testosterone, okay? What's the number one most protective hormone to the cardiovascular system? Testosterone, all right? So, so you're taking a drug that's supposed to be reducing your risk of heart disease and, um, it's reducing a hormone that is, is very protective to the heart. So um, guys, I can go on and on about hormones. At the end of the day, you need cholesterol to make hormones, all right? And I would say that's the number one thing that we see increase cholesterol today, okay? Um, number one surgery. Today, getting your gallbladder removed. That's your number one surgery, right? Guys, they will, you go in with any kind of, you know, GI discomfort and they find that your gallbladder is not functioning 100%. Um, they will rip that thing out quicker than common sense can kick in. Like let's schedule you first thing in the morning. Let's get that thing taken out. Um, number one reason, uh, that, uh, that bile is affected. Well, I wouldn't say the number one reason, cause I would say that'd be stomach acid, but a, a very common issue that people are having because you need cholesterol in order to make your bile. Bile is what secreted by the gallbladder and that's what breaks down fat. So without proper cholesterol levels, you can't make enough bile or you don't make healthy bile right? Um, vitamin D synthesis. Guys, when sunlight hits your skin, you need cholesterol in those cellular walls in order to synthesize that sunlight into vitamin D. Okay. So very important to be able to get vitamin D into your system. Uh, let's see. So one reason why we're so big on breastfeeding guys is because cholesterol is so important for brain development and brain health, right? So breastfeeding, that baby's getting so much good cholesterol uh, from, from mom. And in reality, there's very little to none of that good cholesterol in most all formulas. Okay. So very, very important to be breastfeeding, but even later in life as an adult cholesterol, all your neurons, all your neuron, your neuron connections, uh, your, all the, there's a myelin sheath, a conductor on the outside of your nerves. All of these are made of fat cholesterol. And so when cholesterol starts to go down, it's going to affect your nerve function. This is why dementia and memory issues, is what will a, a, a statin drug can lead to also like leg pain and nerve pain and neuropathy issues because again it's affecting your nerves guys your your brain and central nervous system if you don't know controls and regulates every single function in your body so if you start to take a medication that's going to negatively affect that system you're crazy you're absolutely crazy the sad thing is is you just don't know that you don't know why you're starting to develop these issues um you know it, it, it's guys it, it's you know, these, these, these autoimmune diseases like MS and things like this, that affects central nervous system function, right? And so taking a statin medication, it's going to increase risk of those type of issues. All right. Um, so guys, that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg. I do an hour seminar 
about the, the importance of cholesterol. Um, you know, and so at the end of the day, guys, you can see with, um, you know, gallbladder issues, which so many people have them, uh, with, with low vitamin D with high stress levels, you know, with, with all these issues, your body's going to naturally increase cholesterol. Right. And so again, we've got to start to ask the question, why is my cholesterol doing what it's doing? Not just let's force it down. Yeah. And then tell you, you know, just maybe, you know, sure, lose some weight or just tell you to, you know, change your diet, but they don't give you any help or guidance of like what any of that means. Well, what do I mean change my diet? So just like start juicing vegetables. Would that help? Would juicing vegetables make your cholesterol go down? Would juicing a bunch of fruit make your cholesterol go down? Right. Interesting thought, right? Because why wouldn't it? If you're giving yourself a bunch of vitamins and nutrients and minerals and all the stuff that you think your body needs to get those building blocks to build the cholesterol, to build hormones, to build it, except your cholesterol rises because of inflammation. And so if you're juicing all these foods that you're allergic to, all of a sudden you're raising more inflammation in your body. You need more cholesterol to go fix more inflammation. You have to, so just the statement of just like, go change your diet. That is a tough thing for people to do because what does that even mean? Everybody is different. He said earlier, our physiologies are different. And so you need to know what you can be eating, what you should be eating, what you can be juicing. That's why you have these supplements with these green powders and they've got 50, 100,000 different, you know, vitamins and, and, and fruits and veg. That stuff will hurt you. That stuff is probably not good for you. And so you got to be very careful with those things if you do not know what your, uh, what your food allergies are. You have to know. And the only way to know is through testing. And so, so how do we know what cholesterol, so let maybe we go through this and this will maybe lead and segue into what we probably want to talk about going over maybe like a test and talk about like sizings and, 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 and the different inflammatory markers that we look at when we do test. But, but um, you, you know, the testing is very important. We have to get tested, right? So what are things that could trigger your cholesterol to be high? And I know we kind of maybe talked a little bit about it here and there, but like number one inflammation, right? So what is triggering and causing your inflammation? Is it food? For a lot of people, especially right now in quarantine, I bet you it is food related. You're sitting there eating a bunch of crap. What are the crap in your house? Because that stuff is gone at the grocery stores. <laughs> I, I look, all the stuff that I get is still there. So you need to be looking in those areas. You need to make sure you're going in the right spots in the grocery store, getting, this, getting the right food. Even if you don't know your food allergies, don't be eating a bunch of grain and sugar and drinking a bunch of pop and things like that. Don't be in a bunch of inflammatory oils. Don't be cooking with olive oil. How about that? You want to talk about fats? You want to talk about cholesterol? Stop cooking with olive oil. Albeit a good, healthy fat at room temperature, when you cook it, when you heat it up, you break those bonds, you turn to trans fat, and that trans fat is going to cause inflammation, and that is what causes your cholesterol to be hot, right? They tell you just watch out for all these saturated fats and whatnot. But, well, hell, I eat a ton of fat. And one, I have good stomach. I have good stomach acid. I'm able to break that. And I have a gallbladder. I'm able to break those things down. I've got physiology that's balanced because I've worked on it. If you're just like hoping and taking drugs and medication, you've got to change your you've got to change your approach because it's not working. So where else can inflammation come from? Yep. Right. And guys, and, and the thing is, is yes, diet is important. Of course, diet's important. Diet's more important to be not promoting inflammation than it is to make sure you're focusing on a low cholesterol diet, if that makes sense. Um, see, when you have high cholesterol, your body's doing it most, more times than not, because here's the deal. Your liver produces 80 to 90% of your body's cholesterol. So what goes in your mouth is only influencing 10 to 20% of your cholesterol levels. So more times than not, when cholesterol is high, it's your body reacting to an abnormal environment or let's see it. Well, it is, it's, it's reacting to, to, to abnormal stresses. It's reacting to infections. It's reacting to, you know, uh, low hord hormones, which again, these are, these are abnormal environments, right? I've never seen my cholesterol have a crazy spike. Well, but I've also, you know, for the last eight years, taken care of myself and do what I tell my patients to do. So, you know, my body has no reason to cause a crazy spike in cholesterol. Uh, but guys, Listen, I mean, all you're doing by taking a statin drug, which is an HMG CoA reductase inhibitor, okay? Say that three times over, but that's that's the pathway that's stopping your liver from making cholesterol. So the statin medication you're taking has no effect on the on the dietary cholesterol at all. It only affects liver function. Why do they do that? Because they know that 
cholesterol is mainly influenced by what your liver does. And so it's bullying physiology. Um, you know, what goes in your mouth is up to you. But again, I see people that eat really, really good and still have high cholesterol. Well, your body's increasing cholesterol so it can heal. It's easy as that. Pretty simple stuff, guys. Again, when you start understanding cholesterol, you don't have to be scared of cholesterol. You don't have to be worried about it being hot. If it's high, let's find out why it's high. And again, the answer is just different for everybody. I don't know why it's high in me. Maybe it's stress. There's a lot of stress going around. Maybe it's viral, not just COVID-19. Maybe it's Epstein-Barr. Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's herpes. Maybe it's flare-ups from, from, from the, the good old days, right? Maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's bacterial. Maybe it's yeast. Maybe it is. There are so many factors that play in, and everybody needs to be treated differently. So if you want to know why your cholesterol is high, you need to set up a consult with one of us so that we can figure out what it is and figure out the proper testing for you. Yep. And yes, Kayla, Cheerios is not going to fix it. <laughs> she said, like, growing up, remember the commercials, like, just eat the Cheerios and you're going to be fine. And, uh, yeah. I even, I even heard a commercial that the Honey Nut Cheerios the other day. Honey Nut Cheerios, healthy for your heart. Um, freaking believable. And, but that's what that's what they're taught. And, and we're learned. And, and, and people, you know, the kids today, they're, they're freaking – in great, like you watch TV and the commercials are just drugs, 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 and, and this food will help you and all these grains and stuff. And, and we wonder why we're so stinking sick, guys. We're like, we're listening to the media. We're we'll looking at the, all the craziness that's going on right now anyways when it comes to media and, and, and listening to everybody, right? So you just got to make gooder decisions. Yes, I said, gooder decisions. And, uh, and, and you got to find people that, that you can trust and people that you know that are going to have a different outcome because they're going to look at you Different. Yes and yes. Yep, you got it. So, so we know we know some things that cholesterol does for us, uh, and why your cholesterol would be increased. But here's the deal: we all want to know, and what y'all should be asking, what be, what we should be thinking is: here's the deal, right? Like, heart disease is still the number one killer. So, if if high cholesterol in itself doesn't equal heart disease, what in the world equals heart disease? What do I need to do to make sure that I'm not a statistic? And become one of the number one killers, right? One of the, the people that, that's affected by the number one killer in the world, which is heart disease. Um, and that's what we want to dive into. So we're going we're gonna to keep you guys on edge a little bit. Um, we're not going to talk to that today because that's a whole other conversation that's going to take a little while. Uh, but I will clue you in that inflammation is a part of it, right? But just because you have high cholesterol, just like those, uh, those, those, those studies done uh, with familial hi hypercholesterol, uh, yeah. The, the studies are clear that that high cholesterol doesn't equal heart disease. So the question is, what do I need to be doing? What do I need to be looking at? What testing do I need to be doing to find out, number one, am I at risk? And number two, if I am, how do you know that? What markers are you looking at? Why the heck aren't my doctors running those markers when they're telling me that I'm doing great, right? Because time and time again, guys, people come in with me to, to us. They're on a statin. Their, their, their cholesterols are under 100, uh, 200. LDLs are under 150. And they're plucking like crazy. They're a ticking time bomb. So how do we know that? What testing do we do? And why the heck are your doctors not looking at that stuff, right? The simple answer to why they're not is because the statin medication has no effect on what truly causes heart disease, all right? So just give that some thought, guys, because you know people, you yourself may be on them, your parents may be on them, your husbands, your wives, they may be on statin medications thinking they're being very proactive to prevent heart disease, and yet... They still could be plaquing like crazy. So tune in this week, guys, because we're going to bring you some great information. I'm pumped. Yep. It's awesome. So that being said, we said in the beginning, we are going to find out who won California Poppy. So here we go. A bottle of California Poppy for those who participated. I'm going to recommend that you guys start participating because we're going to give away some free stuff. Later this afternoon, later this evening, Dr. Shannon is doing a thyroid on uh, a thyroid on webinar, a webinar on thyroid health. And she's going to do it a little bit, and she's going to uh, just remind people about that and also tell us what the next giveaway is going to be. So giveaway number one goes to... We love California Poppy, guys. A great calming herb. Uh, great to help with adrenal glands. Great to help with stress. Uh, man, we, we love California Poppy. So whoever gets this, lucky person. And if you get it and the bottle is open, just know it was from me and I needed some. So here we go. Winner, winner, chicken dinner goes to Julia Graves. Julia Graves. Nice. Congratulations, Miss Julia. Get a bottle of California poppy. So, Miss Julia, 
I will be sending that out to you. Uh, we'll get that in the mail uh, tomorrow uh, so that you can have it. Thank you for participating. And for those that didn't know, you go back and uh, look at the other posts, but we're going to have a lot of stuff coming up this little bit. Just, just shower you guys with gifts and uh, just participate and have fun. Stay tuned to learn more about cholesterol. We How do you qualify for the drawing, Doc? How do you qualify? Uh, Doc Shannon is going to be telling you that here in just a little bit. So watch, she's going to go live in just a bit. You know, the last, the last one was we just had, you know, tag people that you love. And uh, and that was just a simple way to enter for this next giveaway and the next challenge that will be uh, announced later on this afternoon, this evening. Okay? Awesome. So awesome, guys. Well, we appreciate the heck out of you. As always, thank you for being a part. Please share this around. Please like this. Please write comments. Please let us know what you want to know about so that we can bring you as much value as possible. Bless you, and we will talk to you soon. See you.